welcome back to another episode of the Marketing Schematic. Um, today you have me, Ann Cotter, as usual, Chad Spotty. Hi, Chad. Hey, Ann. And our special guest is Andrea Yank, who this is not your first time on the podcast. Um, I think you were our first or second guest, and you talked about Google Analytics 4, mm -hmm. uh, which was great. And you are kind of a just subject matter expert in all things digital. So welcome back and thanks for being here. Thanks. Yeah, I will take it as a personal compliment that I'm the first one you've had back on the podcast. Yeah, two times. <laughs> I know. I, I feel back. like, you, Love it. yeah, I don't think it'll be the last time either. So <laughs> be prepared for further invites. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a regular, so. Yeah, you're a regular now. Okay, um, so our topic for today, which we've covered, I think, a lot in a few different ways over the past couple of years, honestly, um, is recruitment marketing for manufacturers. So this came up earlier this year, I think, at our first quarterly roundtable um, as a very hot button issue for a lot of our clients. Um, right. A lot of our clients are kind of bringing that up in their uh, monthly meetings with us. Uh, what we, what can we do to start pushing uh, open positions and roles? Um, and then Andrea, you actually hosted a virtual workshop too earlier this year, where we kind of pulled back the curtains and showed what targeting op options look like in LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, so we've covered this topic a lot, but not on the podcast yet. So that's why we're doing it today. Um, and yeah, if you want to watch the workshop that Andrea did, you can go to Top Floor's website, topfloortech.com, um, and look under videos if you want to see that kind of behind the scenes look at targeting. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the topic for today. And I'm I'm excited to discuss it again. I feel like we could continue the conversation forever around this. So Oh yeah, it comes up. Yeah. I almost want to say it comes up in every single new conversation or uh, existing mm -hmm. client conversation that I have. So it's a good one for sure. Yes. Yeah. Very, very timely um, and definitely a hot topic. Um, cool. Well, I said to you guys earlier, I'm going to skip our icebreaker question since I think we already did that with you, Andrea. Um, I feel like you had, I think your answer was something Wisconsin based for best pace, best place to travel. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, probably. It was probably where I haven't been because I haven't been to a lot of places. <laughs> like Door <laughs> County. I've never been. I know. I'm probably the only one really? in Wisconsin who's never been to Door County. Yes. Wow. So Worth the I'll drive, get there. Well, that sure. can, yep. Yeah. That can be on your wish list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right. Um, well, let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, so Andrea, first question for you is, um, why I guess have you, do you think that recruitment marketing has become such kind of a, a hot topic for manufacturers specifically in the last two to three years? Yeah, I think there's a couple of factors here and most importantly is that more positions are being created, um, while less people are joining the trades and manufacturing mm -hmm. side of things. So, that's not a new problem. They've known, they've seen it coming from a mile away. Um, a lot of people are aging out um, and not getting that new talent in. Um, there's also brand new positions being created um, mm -hmm. in the in the manufacturing industry, and um, they're really finding it more difficult to attract and uh, hang on to those more qualified. Uh, younger generation of employees. So really just knowing like the traditional uh, ways of attracting that talent aren't, aren't working anymore because the, mm -hmm. the focus has shifted to different, different channels. That makes total sense. I think as a whole, I, I forget where it was or what event I was at and it was last year and there was some, uh, someone from uh they had an economics background uh, for the state of Wisconsin, and they were talking about how everyone wants to say that the labor shortage is like this problem that no one saw coming. But realistically, if they look at data, they've seen it for over yeah. the last 15 years. It was a known thing, you know, with baby yeah. boomers starting mm -hmm. to age out and just the way 
the way the numbers and the way the demographics were looking uh, just from population numbers, like he's like, yeah, this is a no brainer. Like we knew it was happening. So that was, I remember I, I that's just the gist of it, what I sat in on. It was like mm -hmm. an hour long seminar, but it was kind of eye opening as to like, oh, okay. So we all saw this coming or we should have saw this coming. And yeah. Here we are. Yeah, <laughs> here we are. Yeah. I, I know um, we referenced the, WMEP report a lot in our marketing events. And this, I yeah. think, was one of the, in their 2023 report, or maybe it was the recap of 2022, um, it was like issue number, like in the first top five issues, I think, for most small to mid-sized manufacturers was recruitment and hiring. Um, so yeah, definitely relevant. And I think it's even critical because I know a lot of our, or not a lot of our clients, but some of our clients have mentioned actually having to like turn down business because they don't have enough, you know, yeah. seats to fill or, you know, enough, enough line workers and things like that. So Crazy. very important. Um, I think a lot of times to, at least in this day and age, like the perception of manufacturing is not always a fair one. Um, and maybe that's specific to like the gen gen Z's. Um, but do you want to talk a little bit about that, Andrea, of just kind of why you think that might be or or what what the perception is? Yeah, I mean, for sure, it's like these manufacturing positions not, aren't necessarily or the perception of them isn't, you know, they're not the flashy, sexy positions like mm -hmm. that are attracting young talent. Um, like, let's say an agency position mm -hmm. um, where you get to be more creative and you're working with some bigger names. Um, but I think that's a, a misperception uh, mm -hmm. because misconception, because um, honestly, there's newer technological advances in manufacturing now that require those kind of jobs, um, like those kind of minds, those creative minds behind them. So mm -hmm. that's just one of the perceptions. Um, I think, again, lack of creativity. Um, also manufacturing has a reputation of being harmful to the environment or worker safety. Um, we've mm -hmm. come a long way in that. So I think we just need to talk about that, be mm -hmm. completely transparent. Um, and then the fear that automation and technology will then replace the jobs that you're being recruited for. So, you know, why am I going to get into a job that's going to be replaced by technology in a few years? And that's just not mm -hmm. the case. You know, I think, I think those, there's different ways to talk about that. It's going to get people to understand more about um, how technology can help those positions and mm -hmm. what new positions are working with the technology that is being added to the manufacturing processes. Yeah. I think going back to like that very first point of it's, it's not flashy or it's not very sexy. Mm -hmm. I feel like the cool part of manufacturing right now is all the automate automation and AI and new technology yeah. that's emerging. And I think that in my mind would make jobs more exciting and more interesting. But so I think that those yeah, kind definitely. of points are what needs to be highlighted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know, I, it's still cool to me when we are touring someone's facilities or taking on a new client and just learning what they make, like, I don't know. There's just something that goes to like actually making something like something mm -hmm. tangible, uh, building something mm -hmm. that goes into something else that, you know, yeah. is uh, a part of uh, some iconic brand or, you know, defense right. for the military or something along those lines. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I get I get envious of that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> that, really uh, cool. You know, I, you're like actually I've creating seen, something. Yeah, I've seen clients where like the, the machines and like on the floor, on the shop floor are like the size of like a house <laughs> and you can actually like yeah. walk through the entire machine. And it's just, it's, it's very cool. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I was, cool. I was at a neighborhood get together a couple of weeks ago and uh, a guy actually had uh, boxes and boxes of these uh, sweet potato kettle chips uh, talking to him more and more. And yeah. it, he's, he's the plant manager for a, a local manufacturing company that makes these chips. And we were talking about like how that process is and all that stuff. And it's just cool. Yeah. You know, you actually make something that people utilize or enjoy every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything around you. It's cool. Um, so why marketing then? I think 
when we think about recruitment, are we immediately go to HR and that it's kind of their job to hire and recruit. Um, but kind of playing off those perceptions and things like that, why is it important for marketing, Andrea, to kind of get involved in the hiring process? Well, I think HR still plays a role, obviously, because they need mm -hmm. to identify the need of the position, but then also like take the stance of like, what are we hearing from candidates who do eventually find us or those that don't end up going with us versus mm -hmm. another company um, so that they can introduce the ideas behind the marketing. But then marketing, I think, I feel like has a huge role to play in it that they know the platforms and what will do well on them. Um, mm -hmm. So HR drives kind of the messaging, but then marketing finesses it and then puts it on the right channels. So mm -hmm. um, whether that's combating negative perception, like um, going more with like technology is enhancing the work that we're doing and creating a safer, uh, more productive environment um, or improving the perception of the employer brand. So uh, again, looking at like those platforms like Glassdoor where um, that's that's your employer brand. And somebody from a marketing perspective needs to look at that and say, how do we look to potential candidates? Um, also helping just interested candidates find you. So, you know, where are people looking for this job? And it's not gonna be, not gonna be in the traditional sense of like the newspapers it used to be, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, digitally, where are they looking and how can you get in front of them? So that's where marketing comes in. Like they are going to be like the where and like, what are we, you know, what kind of messaging, but also HR needs to have that communication. It's like, here's what we're hearing. Here's, here's what we need to address. Um, here's what we need to highlight. Like we're doing mm -hmm. this awesome employee development program. Like, let's talk about that. Cause nobody's yeah. going to know that outside the company. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, what you said earlier on, Anne, is that, you know, we've ran into clients who have, you know, they have challenges with hiring people. So they're turning down business or, you know, maybe mm -hmm. putting a cap on their marketing budget because they can't bring on any new projects or new work. Well, why wouldn't you then <laughs> turn to marketing to try to, you know, fill those open mm -hmm. positions and things? I think at its core, the principles are the same, you know, whether you're going after uh, new accounts or, you know, new people to run the machinery or the equipment or, you know, do whatever positions you have available. Uh, the same basics are kind of, you know, they're the same. Why, why wouldn't you use marketing to try to go after mm -hmm. that stuff? Yep. Yeah. Instead of thinking of it as attracting your customer, you're just attracting your employees, future employees, essentially. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Right. And then, yeah. you know, like, like you were saying, Andrea, with, you know, maybe promoting new things that, you know, culture type things within the company to try to fill positions, kind of has a residual effect then. And you're also promoting that out to the world from a, you know, like a, a, a traditional marketing standpoint. So, hey, you know, we're really serious about X, Y, and Z, this program we have for our internal, you know, staff about learning or that sort of stuff. Like that's going to benefit also on the other side of things to show a prospective client that, hey, this is what we take seriously, or this is how we do things from an employee standpoint. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I feel like even if you're like a potential like partner for a supplier, if you if employing culture is important to you, you're seeing that from this potential, you know, partner, uh, you're like, yeah, we want to be a part of that because we also think like that. With yeah, employees. exactly. And especially if you're comparing better. two, you know, you're comparing multiple companies to work with for the same, let's just say project. Uh, that's our yeah, world. Mm -hmm. Everything's kind of project or, or that type of like you can compare them on price. You can compare them on kind of the deliverables and the end result. But also you're looking at, do I want to work with this person? Like, are they, mm -hmm. is this company a good fit for us culturally? Mm -hmm. Well, here you go. Now you're out there promoting to try to get new employees in. Well, that's going to have effect on, on that other marketing side of things. You're trying to get new business as well. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, people kind of gravitate towards LinkedIn as like the channel that is the correct one to use for um, kind of company culture, but also recruitment, hiring, um, self-promotion, things like that. Um, I guess in your opinion, Andrea, I know this is like a very broad question, but is that really the best channel <laughs> for recruitment and why or why not? Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So LinkedIn is definitely like the cleanest platform for posting jobs. Obviously it has, it's a place for you to actually put your job postings. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily the best channel for every type of job though. Um, yeah. Think about like the people that you see actually having built out profiles on LinkedIn. Um, you might not find your machine operators on LinkedIn. It's just not a priority for them to build that out, that profile out. Um, so they're not looking there for those types of jobs. Um, so you really just need to think about where do people in this position frequent? Um, and also mm -hmm. where would be they be likely to look for this job? Um, it also helps if your company already has a presence on the platform. So, you know, even like every company should be on LinkedIn, I think, but maybe you're not on LinkedIn, but you do Facebook because you like to share things about, you know, company events or employee events or, you know, things like that. Um, then you're already established there and it doesn't look so shady because there's a lot of shadiness going on in the recruiting world. So we have to be mindful of that too. But yeah, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is very clean uh, for posting jobs, but mm -hmm. you're not necessarily going to fill every job right. um, on LinkedIn. It's sometimes your yeah. audience is going to be found elsewhere, Facebook, That's mm -hmm. Instagram. Such a good point. As kind of an exercise, as, as prep for this, I just started searching for, I come from a family of tradespeople and kind of skilled laborers. Um, so I just started looking for my brother, my dad, uncles, mm -hmm. uh, aunts, like anyone I could think of that was either okay. in the trades or had like a, a machinist position or a skilled labor job. And not a single one of them has a LinkedIn <laughs> profile. Like right, not, yeah. not a single one of them has probably ever even logged into LinkedIn. So I think that's a really, mm -hmm. a really good point. It really depends on the position you're trying to fill and the audience you're trying to go after. I think the other point too is if, again, looking at a younger demographic, they might not even be on the job hunt. Like they might not even know about like the trades or manufacturing as a career path. So then you really have to look at like what other platforms are they on that you can kind of get in front of them and introduce them to the idea because they're they're definitely not going to LinkedIn looking for machinist positions and they're probably they're probably not on LinkedIn at all but they're on TikTok and Instagram and those kinds of things so you kind of have to start looking at other channels as a possibility too yeah, that's a good point. I feel like there's a lot of entry level positions in uh, manufacturing that would fill the need of the people looking for their, you know, entry level jobs, but also get them interested in the industry. Because once they're in it and they're seeing all these other positions, like maybe someday they want to be a CNC operator. Like that's like you didn't know how cool that was until you saw somebody else doing it. Like that's kind of playing the long game, but also fulfilling your need of that, those entry level positions. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Also that list that you were adding YouTube, Reddit, those are other mm -hmm. channels that I know those people that I was talking about before are definitely on, um, mm -hmm. daily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how do you decide then Andrea, which channels are kind of the best to use when? So when might you look at like Facebook, for example? Um, I would think about, again, back to like where you want people to really find you. So if Facebook is, is really good for promoting that company culture posts about like employee events, like company events, um, people like Facebook is obviously the place where people want to share things. So if you're featuring like a quick video from your company event and it features people in it, they will share that, which then gets expanded to their followers or their friends. And then mm -hmm. those people might expand it to their friends. And then that's how you build out this awesome post that you're showing your company culture um, through all people that are like the people that work at your company. It's super easy. So mm -hmm. definitely like make sure that you're sharing those types of things on the right platform. So Facebook, again, really good for sharing content. Um, their, your current companies won't just share the like and comment as well, obviously, but um, yeah, it'll expand to their networks and then their networks and their networks and so on. So um, definitely Facebook, if you have the content to share LinkedIn, I just think that every company should really be on LinkedIn just to validate themselves mm -hmm. as a company, but um, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but it, again, it might not be somewhere that you advertise your mm -hmm. positions, depending on what. At position. least not for maybe like trades roles, but I mean, most companies have a leadership yeah. team, executives, so they might be the ones on yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. And some of the more senior members of um, the floor team too, you know, you could mm -hmm. have operations managers that, you know, mm -hmm. they want to, they have degrees that they want to post about, you know what I mean? Like some of those more um, educational backed uh, cer or certified bad. So like if you are a certified welder, you might go on LinkedIn, even though that's not, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think about that as the platform that you are going to for that position, but you might still be on there. So, um, why might it be then important to look, I guess, beyond LinkedIn towards like, would you ever consider, I guess, looking at platforms like TikTok or Instagram? That's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I, f I feel like I wouldn't go, I wouldn't have my first post on Instagram and TikTok be about hiring for sure. Like go explore those platforms, see if your company has a place on them first, um, start posting organically with the content that you feel like might resonate there. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're doing short, short form videos, obviously TikTok is the place to be. You could also do reels on Instagram, but, um, don't, I wouldn't say that that's, like, don't start there if you're not there already, yeah. um, just because uh, you're not going to have any success. Like, yeah. like <laughs> you I need to establish yourself first or or at yeah. least get a feel. Yeah. Yeah. Like establishing kind of the long, it's the long game, like you were saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So as far as ads and targeting go what are some of the kind of differences and capabilities between what's out there for, you know, putting money behind open positions that you have? Um, yeah. So Facebook and Instagram are pretty limited on their targeting capabilities. Um, it got narrowed down probably about five years ago where you can't look at somebody's current, like if they list like what their job is, you can't do that, but you can target them based off of um, location and interests. Um, they would have to mention probably one of the interests that you're talking about, like manufacturing. There are interests like manufacturing, um, but your ad goes, your ad spend get, goes a lot further on Facebook and Instagram. Like you will reach a whole lot more people. Yes, you don't get to narrow down your audience, but people again share things. So if they see something that you're like, oh, um, my cousin Bobby might like that job. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to tag him in that. I see that all the time. Um, so it's, it's just more about sharing those, um, those things, uh, through Facebook on LinkedIn, you have the very robust targeting, but again, your ad spend is going, is getting eaten up pretty quickly. So make sure you are as targeted as you need to be. You can do job title, general job functions, education background. Um, but again, not every candidate is going to be on LinkedIn. So just make sure it's the right platform for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like on Facebook, you kind of are forced almost to cast sort of a wider net just because you can't yeah. get as granular as you can on LinkedIn. Right, exactly. Yeah, so you mentioned like interest targeting being some are there any mm -hmm. other like ways you can kind of get in front of that audience um again i would just start organically like if you mm -hmm. have a presence there start talking about company culture um you can feature your employees talking about company culture um i think organically you're going to do a whole lot better with facebook uh, then you went on LinkedIn talking about those kind of things. Um, but as far as ad spend, it's, it's very hard. Yeah. To narrow down your target there. But again, like I said, your, your ad dollar is going a lot further. You're reaching a whole lot more people, which could mm -hmm. potentially trigger somebody else to think about somebody else and mm -hmm. get them yeah. interested. Makes sure. sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so you mentioned as far as kind of like organic, practices, like promoting your company culture, um, employee highlights, things like that. Are there any other 
like best practices when it comes to your company page or, you know, what I guess can entice people to look at you as a, a career path? Yeah, definitely make sure your profile's filled out. Like don't just have your company page created, but then a blank about us section and a blank, um, you know, locations, things like that. Make sure your page is fully filled out. Um, start posting organically if you haven't already. Um, and don't make it all about the products or services that you're, you're, you're advertising for, but also about your company. Um, talking about company events, talking about um, specific roles that um, not even if you're hiring for those roles, but talk about like, hey, we have this awesome product manager role um, talk, and talk about how great that is and what kind of career path that might have. And, you know, those kind of posts get people interested in your company. Like, hey, they're, they're thinking about us employees. I want to work for a company like that for sure. Um, again, along with that too, is like, talk about any employee development programs that you have. And a lot, a lot of companies have started like, um, peer mentorship programs or, you know, job shadowing programs, things like mm -hmm. that. Talk about that. That's great for your employees, but also for potential candidates. And it might make, make the difference between a potential candidate going with you over another manufacturer. So definitely yeah. talk about that. Yeah, that was, I think one of my questions was like, just kind of beyond digital almost, like what other yeah. ideas you have for like, what you can do to get kind of get in front of this younger demographic and expose them to manufacturing. So like, for example, you just mentioned um, like job shadowing, but maybe there's like mm -hmm. internships or apprenticeships and things like that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, yeah. And even... Ahead. Even beyond that, um, you just maybe think of when we're interviewing um, for some of our entry level, entry level, but you know, uh, later level um, positions. Mm -hmm. um, the one question that we always get asked now is, "What are we doing in the community? Like, what's our community involvement?" Hmm. So, if your company does that, and I know a lot of companies do, talk about that. Have a page for that mm -hmm. on your website. Talk about what you, what kind of events you do annually. Um, what kind of programs you have for your employees to introduce new programs to get involved in. Um, all that could have a place uh, in your advertising. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. This is also, mm -hmm. it's making me think of too, I think um, we've heard this a lot too from experts in this area is like just using real employee photos too. Like I think, so company yes. events and volunteer events, like, using don't use stock images like show the real faces <laughs> please, please don't, yeah please don't use stock images for yeah for, for company yeah. events for i want to see that like hey we had right? a yeah. chili cook off well, this month and it's just a stock photo yeah. <laughs> or like i don't even i feel like on like generic company events pages you just have like I yeah know, okay doing, i see what you're saying you know, yeah. stuff like that where you're just like Okay. None of you are real. It'd be pretty Chili funny just to it's have Kevin photos. from the office. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's exactly what came to mind is like the office yeah. pictures. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I was thinking more of like yeah. your website, do but but also that's kind of another yeah. point I wanted to talk about is like the importance of kind of consistency. So even if you choose one of these channels as like this is how I'm mm -hmm. going to get in front of uh, this target demographic for the seats I'm trying to fill um that has to also translate to your website or other areas so yeah. do you want to talk about i guess like best practices when it comes to that kind of thing yeah definitely have a section i would encourage that if you have the content have the section in your website to talk about more than just like what your company does and the positions you have open because again people are looking for that and if other companies are already being upfront about that, you've already you've already lost them. So just have a page that talks about um, culture, values, community involvement, um, any kind of employee development programs. Like I said, uh, talk about any career fairs that you have up, internship uh, programs that you offer, um, apprenticeships, things like that. Um, 
make yourself as an employer well-rounded on your site. Yes, you can go out and like try to advocate on Glassdoor all you want and that, and you should be looking at what Glassdoor is saying about you. But if your own website doesn't, it has, you, you have the space on your own website to basically promote yourself as well. You might as well do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know we've had some clients come to us looking to fill open positions. And I know we can do like all the targeting in the world <laughs> and get really granular and have really good messaging in our ads. But if your website looks really bad, <laughs> I was like a prospective employee, I would just be like, oh no, never mind, forget it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're trying to uh, attract the younger talent. Um, you shouldn't have a, a website that looked like it was from the nineties. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> like they're going to be like, Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so last question then for you, Andrea is thinking about examples of clients you've worked with. Um, have there been successful strategies if you can kind of describe the context or scenarios or, um, seats that they were trying to fill? Like what did the, tactics and approach look like for that? So one of our clients was looking for to fill a position for engi an engineer, um, an engineering role. And um, the two options were Facebook or LinkedIn. We decided LinkedIn was probably the best um, place to go for that. You see a lot of engineers there um, having built their own profiles and whatnot. Um, we advertised talking about um, company benefits because um, that is something that they are very interested in, obviously. I think everyone is, but um, it was a good thing to highlight. Um, but also uh, we talked a little bit about more about the role and the responsibilities within that role and um, what they would be involved in, which was a lot of like product development um, type of engineering. And I think that really made it seem more interesting. It's not just like another engineering role, you know what I mean? Um, so that was the approach that we took there. Um, they did end up filling that role at, and then we have reused actually that same ad a couple of times when they've had to expand their team or um, fill similar roles. So that was successful with that. Um, the other client that we helped was um, somebody looking for machine operators. Um, and we went the uh, Facebook role or for Facebook route with that. Um, don't see a ton of machine operators with LinkedIn profiles. It just made more sense to target them on the Facebook side of things. Sure. Um, and again, even though we have to cast that really wide net of interests, um, we were able to fill that role within a month for that particular awesome. client. Very yeah. Cool. So it's just about getting in front of people with interests that might match up with that type of role. Um, and then also it was people sharing that, mm -hmm. that ad and saying, Hey, you know, Joe or Hey, um, Samantha, like, I think you'd be interested mm -hmm. in this. And cause like, it's more social like that on, on Facebook, like think people are sharing things and they're thinking about other people and they're, commenting and liking and whatnot. So yeah. Awesome. yeah. I think those are really good examples too, of just the different approaches you can take depending on who that person is and where they're spending their time online. So yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, those are all the questions that I have today for you, Andrea. Um, thank you for joining again. Like I said, I know yeah. that you'll probably be back because I'll keep <laughs> knocking on your door and asking <laughs> for you to come back to the podcast. So fair warning. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> yep. And I know you'll say yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course I will. Yeah. yeah. You don't have a people you pleaser. Have much, yeah, you don't have much of a choice either. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this is a lot of really good info. Um, like I said, at the beginning of the episode, if you want to see kind of that behind the scenes look at what targeting selection looks like in Facebook and LinkedIn, um, you can go find that full virtual workshop that Andrea hosted on our website. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining for another episode and we'll see you next time.